hello friends we are done with all our time value of money based videos also we have seen how to use calculators now time to move on to our major module today i am essentially picking up this out of so many requests like so many students have suggested me sir please guide us how to prepare investment planning because as far as my uh, experience is concerned most of my students uh, pass in this particular module but when i look at my blog i have seen so many students fail in this particular examination so step by step we understand how to prepare this module then in the coming videos i am also going to take up some of the videos on the challenges usually faced by students okay so let's move on with our today's objective to understand investment planning uh see this is the module as we know that 80 percentage of the weight comes from investment planning and remaining 20 percentage weight comes from introduction to financial planning which i have been highlighting from fairly long period of time i am asking all of you to read it because in the video i cannot read such a long statements learning objectives are equally important because this is going to set you with the theme of the subject now this is where i'll highlight essentially now see this in this particular examination we have this is theoretical question this is also theoretical question we know thoroughly so you will be having 14 such questions of 18 marks so if you are weaker at securities market then probably you are going to lose lot of marks here now section 2 section 3 and section 4 all have four marker numericals so this is to be looked at thoroughly this have three marker questions also so these are flooded with numericals and very less number of theories you can see all across and section 5 i am going to highlight essentially i don't teach this particular section in classroom but uh, the topics which fps has given we are going to look at okay let's quickly move further and start with our first part it is investment products universe and their applications now in this particular section you can see we have got 12 marks and that too we have got how many items you can quickly look at this we have got we have got 10 items of 1 marks this we know and four items of 2 marks just just understand it it is 10 marks here 8 marks here makes total of 18 divide by 150 this how we derive a 12 percentage weight in this particular section okay move further and let's see what topics have been covered up first is fixed income instruments so all bonds debentures postal schemes have been covered up right then we have got money market instruments so many things covered up so which i i'll be uh, covering up in coming videos now we have got mutual funds then we have got equity market right so this is very very uh, what you can say detailed understanding and you have to go through google a lot because you will be understanding what is secular bull trend what is secular bear cycles then understanding market cycles so many things so lot of practicality here but yes we we should also understand the marks suggested it is one marker and two marker so don't don't get into extreme details but you should know it that's what i expect further derivatives and commodities fortunately now the weightage to this particular topic has come down you can understand it earlier curriculum right it, it was in i am talking about 2009 10 there were used to be so many numericals on derivatives and i was always wondering why should a, a financial planner study so much of derivatives but this has been once again very nice move done by fpsb they have kept it because we cannot ignore the importance of derivatives so they have kept it but the marks have been reduced then we have got foreign exchange market this is also fairly simple marks allocated either you can expect one or two marker question and at times it doesn't come also right so this is what you should study like what is foreign exchange market you should understand exchange rate quotations and some of the factors which affect exchange rates and along with that all the derivative products which can easily mingle with previous topic now this is where you should study more this is real estate and other investments the concept of reit venture capital fund private equity investment structured products these are some of the things which are testable in examination so you should be studying all these things right and we, you should not forget that we are going to have as such how many questions as i highlighted 14 such questions in all theory and what i have seen is students actually 
fumble in this theory because there is a lot of technicality if you are if you are a college student then it is very very important that you should thoroughly study all these things but professionals you know all these things so th that is the difference now we are starting with the second section it covers up so many questions like you can see three questions of one mark two questions of two marks five question of three marks and one question of four marks so it has got all the kinds of question title of this section is risk profiling of products and investors asset allocation determinants it is a fairly long title but it is very very simple types of investment risk it is purely theory and you can simply search on google you ha you just have to study one page not more than that for this another is product profiling in terms of inherent risk and tenor so this is also once again theoretical part that short term products medium term products and long term products right but it has got two marks make sure you study this thoroughly now risk profiling of investors this is also the point wherein they are asking so many questions like understanding investors investment psychology and investment behavior then risk based on life stage risk based on investors earning income generation and assets so these are some of the topics which fpsb is covering up in examination but they are theoretical questions so they are not going to be these straight questions they would be application based questions so make sure you are able to answer this now next is asset uh, allocation and financial assets and that is where our core ip begins asset allocation what is the meaning of asset allocation you should know this asset classes introduction to all the asset classes expected return goal specific asset allocation asset allocation changes with uh, when appropriate or when approaching goals or some of the circumstances definitely selection of asset mix according to client's goals very important you can have theory questions you can also have numericals because they have suggested four marker question from this another one is types of asset allocation strategies these are uh, we we can say most popular strategies strategic asset allocation tactical asset allocation and another is life cycle based asset allocation and this is the same asset allocation which we uh, are going to come across while we study national pension system fine so these are the types of asset allocation strategies and be ready for questions from this now which kind of questions they ask i'm going to highlight uh, but as of now we are understanding only the curriculum so what should you be studying you should know it thoroughly and have patience if you really want to get through the examination then don't skip this video slowly gradually move along with me and complete the video now section 3 as i have been saying that section 3 and section 4 are always heavy weighted in our examination so section 3 says goal based investment planning measuring and managing risk analysis of returns and this this particular section tells the story you are going to have four questions of four marks five questions of three marks what else you want and you can also see the weight given to this particular subject this is the topic rather it is 25.33 out of 150 so this is heavy weighted topic and if you are not able to crack this then believe me you cannot get through this examination so investment planning to achieve financial goals goal specific investment portfolio versus common investment pool selection of product and product diversification see this these are not the topics from which you are going to have straight questions but yes you can have one or two marker application based or say straight questions from theory angle can be expected but not the numerical additional lump sum investment versus systematic staggered investment this is where uh, i am going to guide you through fpsb sample papers in coming videos and this is where i am going to highlight what this category of questions are then monitoring progress in investment portfolio for goal achievement now essentially i what i can say is like client has been investing from such a long period and we have to identify what is the shortfall what is the surplus to achieve a particular requirement how in a staggered manner he should be investing such kind of things can be covered up and these are fairly longer questions and th these are the questions to be answered precisely addressing risk aversion avoiding speculation and uh, protecting portfolio erosion now these are also theoretical questions measuring risk now we have been fortunate because with time i can say fpsb has stop stopped asking questions on calculating variances and standard deviation 
earlier curriculum had so many questions coming up on this particular topic but nowadays they are not asking but yes we should be knowing this because this is what they ask beta right and for beta we need standard deviation correlation that right? these are the two essential elements so this is the topic wherein you can expect 3 to 4 marks they have rightly said it is always there in examination so what comes up uh, when when we calculate all these things we are going to study because i am uh, as i said i am going to have video on the challenges or challenge topics of this particular module okay let's move further and understand diversification strategies like types of diversification uh, diversifiable non diversifiable risk right so that is only one slide which i have on this particular topic like uh, understanding diversifiable and non diversifiable risk effect of diversification on portfolio risk and return so yes we have some of the <coughs> questions like client is investing 60% equity and say 40% in debt it goes on for say fairly longer period of time say 10 years or so and they are asking us to evaluate the rate of return such kind of questions can come from this point hedging is purely a theoretical part here no numerical now this is also very very testable some of the things we have already understood in our earlier videos this is uh, the new topic coming up here time weighted rate of return and rupee weighted rate of return then real return we have already studied effective nominal holding period return all these things we know what comes new here is cagr no we we know this irr we know this the new topic here is il to maturity this is what we are going to study and performance analysis of stock that is dividend yield and all these things p ratio all these things right so you can take this is very important topic and questions are coming up but once again i am saying the kind of questions which come up from this topic that is 3.4 are easy very easy fine so that that was heavy weighted section of our curriculum now move further and understand fourth section of our curriculum it is investment strategies in portfolio management once again active investment style so dynamic management of asset allocation frequency of churning that theory hunting of uh, hunting for gains from investment in temporarily undervalued sectors theory uh, security selection market timing and probably this can be there this this all are according to me these all are uh, to me theory questions passive investment strategies yes this is very testable uh, buy and hold strategy then we have uh, sip swp and stp you will always find out questions on this and we have value averaging and this value averaging goes up to final level also so this is important now very important topic from this particular section section 4 is understanding capital market line then post that it is capital asset pricing mo model post that these are the i always ask my students to do this thoroughly essentially sharpe's ratio trainer's ratio jensen's ratio you will be having around 2 to 3 questions coming from this particular topic so you cannot afford this capm is also useful in determining rate of return so based on that questions are always there then sml i think i think they are not testing much security market line which which actually comes from capm then modern portfolio theory yes because if you are not knowing modern portfolio theory you cannot define cml and monte carlo simulation it is absolutely no it is never tested in our examination it is out already now move further and c revision portfolio rebalancing this is extremely important and i am going to have essentially uh, say minimum two videos on portfolio rebalancing techniques so this is what is very very important and sure shot you can expect a question on portfolio rebalancing now this is the final section and as i said earlier this is this i am not teaching to my students in classroom i just give them some hint rather i ask them to know something about all these acts no doubt marks are high but we can't help essentially now can somebody suggest 
what is to be studied when in the curriculum FPSB says Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. Uh, it is very interesting if somebody can respond definitely you can respond uh, in the comments. But other than that even I too do not know what is to be taught here. So, I just broadly guide my students what, what is Reserve Bank of India, what, who is SEBI then uh, Security Contract Regulation Act. So, we hardly spend half an hour on this not more than that. But on discussion, I am not teaching any of these things and these are some of the entities which you should know. If you are not aware about it, frankly do not spend a lot of time uh, reading more about it because this does not help a lot in examination. And as I said, the major part in our examination is section 3 and section 4 to get through. I hope your understanding of investment planning curriculum is now better and keep learning with me and I will make sure that you clear this examination smoothly and with good grades. If you have liked my video, do not forget to subscribe it. Thank you.